okay. So it's another one minute left. So we get one stop. If you think about what you can do to close the digital divide, so um, if you already even pick up the microphone and you can start sharing it with all of us, well, it helps to understand who you are when you pick up the microphone, introduce your name, and then uh, what do you think? Let's share not more than, say, one minute, okay? So here we go, let's get started. Are you ready? <laughs> what you can do, okay? If not, then maybe you can pass the microphone to Ken's table. So, yes, help us to understand some of your ideas. Hi. Remember, when you say something, you're participating in class, you're earning your points too. Okay, could you stand up and help us to introduce yourself? Yes. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sam Sam. I think uh, I've met a couple of you before. Yes. Uh, what, what can you do? As an individual, uh, I don't have the financial means, so I would like uh, come up with an initiative to, let me say, start up a, a charity community or something. Then I'll just go to big companies like CDM or China Mobile and uh, ask okay. for assistance. Right. And uh, I can pass on, like, let me say, electronics to the community. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. also an idea because you want to collect efforts from others too, right? Yes, yes. And create a group which is its mission is to help to close the gap. Okay, so maybe your colleagues from your table would like to add more. So can you pass the mic to Kenny? Kenny, do you have any other ideas? Uh, actually, I think what individuals can be done is quite limited. So I would okay. say. Uh, um, in nowadays, the government has already, you know, put a lot of uh, capital on the public uh, 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 devices. Right. I would say, as an individual, I would try not to use them since I have my own to leave the chances to the other ones who really need to use. Like, for example, in the public library, they already have, the, you know. I will, I will say, if I have my own, I will bring my own or something like this. Okay. And, yeah. and this is talked about the hard, hardware for the software or I'll, I'll say the source. Because, you know, uh, I have some friends in mainland China and they, or they suffer from the great fire or they are, you know, sometimes they cannot get news as easy as outsiders. I see. I will say, as a friend of them, I will, you know, provide some information from the YouTube which everyone knows that mainland China cannot access. Yes. And even Google, sometimes they go, maybe one year or two ago, they cannot access the Google. As a friend of them, I can transfer the source. Okay. It's just something I can think of. <laughs> you're not breaking the system, but you're just helping to pass the information on, right? Okay, thank yes. you. Yes. Do you have any other things? Can you pass it to the lady? Maybe the lady on your table would like to say something. Uh, Hello. I think maybe I can donate uh, um, my hope one to to those who doesn't who, who doesn't have. So you mean the hardware, right? Yes. The computer, yes. Okay. Yes. So you're very uh, it's very kind of you. So individually, you can try to um, share the resources, the hardware resources. Yes. Can you think of anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. Can you pass the microphone to the table of your choice? You can choose any table, yes. You are giving them a chance to earn scores from the class participation. Because normally when you stand up to speak, remember that this is your time to earn the scores. Just pass to one table, yeah. Okay, don't take up time away from that. All right, thank you. So maybe, yes, could you help us to understand your perspective? What can you do to close the digital divide gap? Uh, this has a lot to do with information literacy, true, indeed. Any contributions from your table? Anyone who want to share? Uh, my home is 
Can you tell us the name? Uh, my name is Winston. Winston, thank you. Um, I think I was same with uh, Kathleen. Kathleen. Yes. Uh, my family members in mainland China yes. also has this problem. Right. So uh, I always share my uh, uh, like YouTube uh, some video or some information or a lot of uh, gaming stuff and okay. with my family. Right. So I yes. Do you mean you download a video and uh, store it in yeah. DVD and then pass it on or something? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's very interesting. It's a very interesting way to do something. So any other thing from your table? The members? Yes. Hello. Hello, my name is Yosli. Yosli. And actually, I am not, uh, I'm still quite comfortable with the problem. Okay. As a, uh, what can we do to help close the digital divide gap? Okay. Oh, okay. 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 So. Uh, I think as a group, we can learn from each other to okay. share our experience or right. uh, some skills that we don't know how to use. Although someone don't have their notebook or yes. their digital device, we yes. can try to make them know maybe one day they can have their own digital right, device. Right. So, so I think this, um, a, we can share our experience and skills with them. So this is the characteristic of a teacher, right? A teacher can always share something first before they <laughs> got the hardware. I think it's very good. Thank you very much. Uh, what about Lena? Do you want to say something? Hello? That means you also have to physically uh, gather some information and particularly pass, on, pass it on to someone who needs it. So what about this table? Do you want to say something? Hello. Hello, hello. Take it easy. I know your computing device is over there. Okay. Yes. And, uh, my name is Clara. Thank you, Clara. And, and I think um, maybe we can donate money okay. to those charity or company okay. who is helping their uh, who have yeah. helping to shorten the gap. Okay. Yeah, uh, because uh, I know that some of the uh, com company uh, or organization are providing some programs yes. to teach those people to uh, learn the uh, how to use the computer. Right. Right. So. Uh, they, uh, but they still need some financial support. So right. if we donate money to them, uh, they will have uh, enough salt to provide a uh, very high quality of program to those who need right. it. I, I think it's a good idea too. I do not know if you have heard this term called um, service meal. So if I have enough money, for example, if I go to you and gay now, I say, let me pay you 10, uh, meal number eight today. So with that 10 meals number eight for lunch, I pay anybody who walk in and said, I, I want to have a meal but I don't have money. You can simply serve him because I pay you already. So that is the kind of charity act could be done by individual, but it must have the coordination and trust of that entity, for example, a, a restaurant. If you pay it, the restaurant will will put them uh, in front of the restaurant door, 10 service meal. And if you, you read this number, you know you can walk in and have it if you don't have money. But of course, we will ask the question, what if people pretend they don't have money, okay? And they waste the resources. And that is another issue. But, the, but we know that in Hong Kong, for example, in San Sui Po, a lot of the homeless people, they don't have anything to eat. And in Hong Kong, they are different in some circle, different Cha Chan Tan or Sila Din, they actually have this program. Yeah. Okay? So what if some some kid who wants to learn computer, but he or she does not have it. So she might register on a, a charity organization and then walk in and you can check our computer for him to use, say for one week, one month, and then hopefully he will return in the short term and something like that. So thank you very much. This is also a very good idea. So do you have anything to add? 
Hello. Hello, I'm Nico. Nico. Uh, actually, I'm quite uh, agree with the, those ladies. Yes. Uh, they uh, we need some organization to support some hardware right. and computers to those poor children. Uh, actually, nowadays in Macau, there's uh, some charity organization that's supporting some. Um, uh, the college students or some secondary students to go to some poor countries to have a free teaching right. for the poor children. That's Maybe uh, the organization can donate more money to those right. free teaching organizations to provide the poor school to have one or two public uh, computer or devices. Right. I think this should be good. Thank you very much. I think it's a very good idea. It has a lot to do with improving the information literacy of the of the regions. Yes, hello. <laughs> my name is Joanne. Joanne, and yes. Actually, my idea is the same with uh, this lady. Okay. Um, I think um, donate money is important, but I think teach them how to use the digital devices is more important. Yes. Uh, because sometimes you, you give them uh, maybe uh, you, you keep the poor uh, computer, but they don't know how to use this, and um, this is useless. So you have to uh, teach them how to use it, and so maybe set up some courses for fear to teach them how to use the devices. Yes, I think it's a very good direction to go. And uh, do you have anything to add, your partner? Hello. Um, Hello. Hi, my name is Joanna. Joanna, yes. Yes, and I think. Um, Ideas? Yes, ideas are good, but I think the most important is teach is how is the way to teach them the how way, yeah, they how, will yeah. get it better. Okay. Because not all the pe not all people know how to use that and right. not it's still just teach them how but maybe they won't understand what to say. So yes. the most important is the communication between them. Right. Yeah and of course, and use the most is the easiest form, the easiest way to teach is the there. Yes, to make sure that those yeah. who are being helped yeah. understand how to use the resources. So, can you pass the microphone to the table next to you? Yes. Hello. Thank you. Do you have anything to share with us? Um, this is a very good um, class. I think the formal formal situation is is all very good. Okay. Um, 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 I think the, the gap between us, uh, the people who have the digital device and the people who don't have. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it is a really really difficult to get uh, get across. Okay. Because uh, like me in my high school. I don't really have a smartphone or PC. Right. But my classmates all have this, this okay. stuff. So you learn from them. I, I, I see. But I see I, I don't have, really have a gap between them. Okay. Because, because um, I see the situation is, is, is can be used in the country and I, I can't know. Okay. No, not really poor because almost every family can have can have a television or other device, other digital device, and we can get the get the information from from that television or or listening to the radio. Okay. So if we communication, we can we can talk about the things that that may be may be kind of important. So so. So even if you don't have a smartphone or a, or a PC, you can still know the things happening in the world. Okay. What do you do? You believe that there's some family who who yeah, live in a region where they don't even have televisions or radio? Yeah, I I, I think so. Yeah. So what we talk about is those who are in need. So what can we do to help them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we can just like like one one of the other students, one of the students said. Yes. Um, just kind of can set up some organization and donate money. And okay. Yes. Also, education is very important. 
Yes. Fast learning new technology is very is is growing very faster, and the technology devices are are very easy to use. Okay. So the education can be more easy. Okay. So that means you can help doing things like this, right? Because we are trying to put forward the questions to you and let you design what you can do to help those, right? So you can help them with the education. We can also help them by connecting them with the charity organization to provide hardware devices, right? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is your partner willing to share too? Yes. Hi, I'm Kathy. Hi, Kathy. I think as an individual, we can gather some people or charities yeah. Yeah. to set up um, an organization. Right. And in this organization, we can talk uh, without limit because okay. Macau is us. Because we live in Macau and we have freedom of speech. Right. Uh, uh, in there. In the organization, we can exchange information and the opinions. Right. Um, and also, we can suggest the government to buy some computer and put them in in some play, in some areas such as uh, open library and let people to yeah. search the internet and gain information. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Now, could you pass the microphone to the very last table? <laughs> could you, four girls, help us to understand some of your ideas? Hello, yes. Yes, you can introduce yourself, yes. Uh, I'm Sarah, and... Hello, Sarah. I think... Uh, the developing uh, the developed country can donate some computers or uh, digital device to the com uh, to the developing countries okay. uh, and teach them uh, the technology knowledge and can uh, can require them to develop some uh, technology and design some programs to the developed country. Okay. And they can get the advantage and the developing country can get the advantage also. Okay. So these are good ideas. Uh, any more to add from your colleagues from the same table? Uh, hello, my name is Shani. Hello, sir. Can you stand up? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sorry. Thank you. I think that the government can do some things uh, such as uh, they can give some money to the non-profit organization right. to give the and this organization can can help some poor people to to use the technology and the, to give them some uh, knowledge of this and also they can such in Macau library there has some computer that can share to each other and they they don't need to do a pay money or something like that but they can use the computer to to um, to search search on the net and to just um, make the gap is closer. Okay, I think it's very good ideas. Uh, for the other two ladies, do you want to share something? Thank you. Hello. Hi, I'm Helen. Hi, um, thank you. I think we can form a group uh, to suggest school, the school to let students can rent uh, the computer devices to okay. school, but to to home. Okay, rent to the home. They can uh, use these devices at home and yeah. So, so for those who cannot afford to have one, they can rent. Yeah, the schools, right? Yes. But from the, uh, to the cheaper cost. Yes. Yes. Because every year the, the government is sponsoring per student on each to so much money, right? So what if the government could also sponsor per uh, school kid one computing device? That would be good enough. Yeah. And Vicky, what about you? Hello, my name is Vicky. I think that in a group. 
uh, we can open more uh, computer training program uh, for the uh, to the perfect. Okay. License the design poster uh, from the Photoshop or AI uh, because in the town uh, uh, didn't have many people know how to use uh, this software. Okay. So thank you very much. And you all have a very good ideas on what you can do as an individual and also advise the, the society as a whole, what can we do? Now what if I would like to give you some sense of what can we do as teacher and also what can we do as student and what can we do as school and also what can we do from the perspective of government. Now I know we are wanting a little bit out of time but it's okay, this is just 10 minutes video. I want you to know this, okay? This is the uh, service learning experience from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. <laughs> Dealing with them. These days seems a bit messy. 
that we have, but do that make me know how to consider of others and make me know how to cooperate with you guys. I mean, I should really help us, and I really want to thank my um, supervisors and also their uh, tutors. Yeah, they really help us because uh, every night we have meetings and all that kind of thing that really help us, and they really do other kind of uh, reflection with us when we uh, went back to Hong Kong. Giving them a lot of refreshing to do, making them really think about what they were learning. Um, I think that actually had a very positive impact upon the motivation of our students, um, motivating them to actually put themselves aside and actually serve and try to learn from this experience. So, uh, can you share with us about what you have learned? <laughs> In the past, I was too target oriented, like what I would like to do, what I would like to achieve. Um, for some of the time, I may be quite reckless towards others' needs, like the service recipient's needs. I may not care too much about their needs, but through this experience that I learned that it is important for us to step into their shoes, to know more about their abilities, their needs, and to conduct their service projects in a more effective manner. Uh, the other challenge that I can think of immediately is in terms of the challenges in terms of knowledge that we are dealing with. Um, one another example also comes from this summer when we actually put together a project that involved bringing our students to this orphanage um, that was a special, that was serving HIV AIDS positive orphans. We did a lot of training. We gave them a lot of preparation. We had uh, we had doctors coming from Prince of Wales Hospital. We had uh, the orphanage director coming to talk about um, the orphans and so on. They went in there within three seconds. They were with the kids. They were talking with the kids. They were playing with them. They were holding them. And I think that the biggest as one of the preparation activities, students participated in a warm-up service at a local school of special education, in which they visited and played games with a group of mentally challenged kids. At the end of the service, they were given a debriefing by Dr. Nye. Let me just ask a question in my head, okay? Who was not comfortable at the beginning? The reason why we brought you here is because think about this environment. This is a very normal environment, right? Look at how clean the place is. I wonder how many of our classrooms in any core are this clean. <laughs> now think about Cambodia. You are in a very different environment. I guarantee you will be no more as clean as here. The kiss will be something that you have not seen before. Some of the kids, the kids today, they were mentally challenged, but they were clean. Some of the kids in Cambodia will not be clean. Most of them will not be wearing shoes. You will not be wearing shoes. The environment will not be clean like this. There will be dust, there will be dirt everywhere. Right? So in a way, the reason why we brought you here is because we want to see how you will react, how you will react to the challenge of being in a situation that is not exactly something that you are used to. Well, I, uh, I would be glad that I come and uh, be able to observe uh, this uh, particular project in this class. It is obvious uh, that uh, Professor Nye, uh, Grace, uh, Stephen Chen, Professor Chen, that uh, prepared them uh, very well. Uh, uh, the expectation of the student need to be uh, uh, well prepared. Uh, I think the staff themselves need to be well prepared. I think this is one lesson that I hope that I, at least I learned and, and, uh, from this experience. And I certainly um, will try to encourage all the staff to remember that uh, when they uh, start designing a uh, service learning house. Handle personal conflicts, handle differences of opinion.
in the end. And through the process, we, they have to assess it, assess it to each other. Sometimes we don't even need to go in and say, okay, who has been the leader? It is obvious so, from how they interact with each other, who has been stepping up. Sometimes we put this. There is something wrong with the internet. Just now, we experienced some kind of uh, glitches. Okay, so let's see if we can restore the glitches from here. Have a nice time for 10 minutes.
It was the end of the Saturday studies. He was actually going up and recruiting new project staff for us. And that is just so completely amazing. And um, I don't know, I mean, uh, in many ways, I see our students as, OK, you know, they're not my kids, but they're somebody else's kids. And you know, uh, I'm sure that his parents would be happy to see him learning something like this. And um, as his teachers, you know, um, it is the duty and the responsibility that, that, that society or our job has placed upon us. But at the same time, it's also just, I mean, what would be more satisfying than actually seeing us make an impact in somebody's life? Something that visible. You know, you could teach like a half a dozen subjects, get a really good SAP and still not see that. Because the students will not remember you after the subjects. Um, but for the service learning projects, I've never had a student who went on the service learning and they could not remember me afterwards. That's not going to happen. Yeah. I think you know it is important uh, now I'm more convinced that I have that, particularly for uh, my academic staff who have never done it before. Uh, I, I would strongly encourage uh, those staff to take time to come out to one of the service learning course to, to understand and experience what this is all about uh, before you get into the planning, before you get into the designing of the course on your own. Now you have just watched a very uh, soft documentary produced by the Hong Kong Polytechnic University Service Learning Team after the 2013 uh, project in Cambodia. They are bringing information literacy to the children in those schools. And very often, those who are located in a region in Cambodia where there is no light, no electricity, no radio, no televisions, and uh, they are very poor. Uh, okay, somehow when they have to take a bath, they have to, they have to take a bath in an open area. Okay, with what what kind of water? With the rainwater. Okay, so that means how can we do some uh, work to close the bridge to the right gap? Now, I want to give you a little bit of time. Think about what you said just now on your own terms. What can you do to cross the bridge to the right? And, and then try to connect your idea to see if you can find in the documentation of this soft video something that you're doing, which is exactly your ideas. Okay? Now, there is a longer documentary, which is about 23 minutes. But that documentary, was produced in Cantonese, okay? It was shared by the students, not produced by the Hong Kong Polytechnic, but by the students of, of the Hong Kong Polytechnic. I'm going to tell you where you can find the links so that you can go home and watch it. Uh, and in that documentary, they tell you the charity organizations in Hong Kong, okay, have put together a project called the Iron Man Project. Okay, you, you heard about Iron Man. It's a movie, but it's an Iron Man project. And then it was done by a group of 60 students in coordination with 30 local students in Cambodia, so 100 students. And they got about 60 mobile devices from CSL Hong Kong. You know what CSL is in Hong Kong. It's just like a CDM account, okay? CSL to be 60 mobile devices. Some of these are iPad, some of these are smartphones. Okay? And then they have to create a system. The student have to create a system. So that when they bring the 60 devices to Cambodia in an area where there is no line of the tricks, there is no intellect, no everything, they need to set up a system there. So that when the student was handed a device there, the device can work just like what you do now. But how can you develop a system like this? And the system was developed by a group of computing students from Hong Kong Polytechnic School, together with our student. Okay? But when you watch that documentary just now, whenever they introduce you a student, you discover that the student is affiliated with two departments. One is the Department of Computing, the other may be the Department of Management. They're actually doing a major in management, the minor computing. Okay? So and they are actually freshman students, sophomores, junior, and senior mixed together. And so what they do is 
they subject themselves to training, okay? Through a surface learning, um, training this is the sharing of the student, okay? Okay, so, and then they spent about, they went to Cambodia in June, and stayed in Cambodia for six weeks to help the kids there to learn when they have no device at all. So what they do is they create an Iron Man. Uh, 60 students carry with them, I guess, six set of Iron Man, each set with 10 different devices. So the Iron Man itself is basically a hardware server. Your server, the, the fact that you can use CTM servers today, the power of your iPhone is because they have a server serving you. So what they need to do is they have to create a mini server and operate in Cambodia just like what CTM is operating here on Macau. But of course, they are supporting a maximum of 60 devices in Macau. CDM supporting maximum how many devices are definitely more than 60, right? So they have many different kinds of server. So what they did, those group of students, what they did is they create six independent mobile server. And each of these servers need to power up doing something like this. But they don't even have the source in Cambodia because they don't have light. So they need to brought in, bring in power battery, which is portable, which is used to power up the server. And once the server is powered, it could be used for two days. And then you have to power up again. And then you can count how much power you have, just like my car. Okay, your car has a battery over there, but every two years you have to change it because it's going to be used up, all right? But that is a, a battery which is going to power up the system. And when the system is powered, the six system power, they every day they go to the roof area and set up the mobile system, just like what you do, and they also have to power up the 60 devices to make sure they have enough power, and then they deliver to the kids in different rooms and help them to learn information literacy by doing some programming, going online, and then drawing picture. And the student have to learn all of these things because they must have a curriculum to help the kids to learn in six weeks. And the first week, maybe in five weeks, in the first week, they land on the board, they set everything, they test it, and they, they divide it in different groups, and then they meet different children. Remember, those students from Hong Kong know not Cambodian language. And most of the Cambodian children do not know Chinese and English. And they have to find a way to teach those kids using the computer devices, even though they do not communicate in languages. Okay? It's a big challenge. And so the way they communicate with the kids is they develop a lot of games for the kids. Music and then the picture, and then the soul, everything step by step. And all these students who went for service learning there become transformed in a matter of six months before they go, and then the six months after they return. And all most of the students who return actively go to recruit other students. Come, come and join me so that we can go next, next year. They help more students. And they were just like you and me. We don't know from Cambodia. They don't know how to be community. But the miracle is they did. And they helped. And at the end of the project, they lift the system there, okay? And they find some charity organizations to produce sustainable battery. They teach the teachers there, they use the system. The teachers there can use the system to help the kids. Information literacy. Right? We need to use. We need to help people to learn. And then this will divide. You're bringing system to an area which has nothing. Okay? And I know that um, in, uh, there are other teams from Hong Kong who go into mainland China to some very good areas where they don't even have anything to teach children. Okay? So it's very interesting. And so, the answers for my questions as a teacher, a student in a college like this, particularly at the University of Macau now, we do have a service learning program 
uh, from our student affairs office. And they, as far as I know, they're putting into consideration different projects like this. And you can propose a project, and they also can provide a project with a job, and then you can help transform yourself. Right now, when you do a study for one course, maybe your major concern is that you pass the course, this is a G requirement, and then I can carry on with my major. But many of the students return get transformed. Passing a course is never a problem for them. And instead, we've got a lot of aspirations. Okay? Learning something from scratch, they experience that. And so they have all the ability to learn. And also, they know how to make connections with our students and find charity organizations. Uh, imagine the fact that they could, they could get the sponsorship of CSL and ask you for six devices. Again, the students would go back to CSL and our company in Hong Kong ask for donation of those devices, creating charity group, just like what you said, and helping them to teach. So they're putting together everything. I think it's quite interesting. So now, having said that, may I ask anyone of you who have signed to share today? Anyone of you? Okay. Yes. Can I pass the time for you now to do the sharing? So that, uh, because I, I have to make sure that you've got a chance to share. Right, so, uh, wait. It's okay, let's come up here. Let's yes. come up here. Right, we have Kathy and um, Wendy. Okay, so, can you just use uh, the first one over there? And then, uh, do you have a power wall or something like this? Okay. Thank you very much. We have two students who are willing to share. Remember, at the end of the sharing, you have to keep a look when you share on your own journal, okay? So you have to keep when on which day you share what by yourself. So that towards the end, you will have a chance to report, all right? So uh, you will also see a note when you submit your first learning contract material. I will have a note asking you, did you share in class during the time of the first learning contract? Well, very good. Now let's get started. Hello, Kevin and Wendy. Are you ready? Please pick up the microphone and help us to understand what you prepare for us. This is a pair, okay? They share together. Yes? There are only one word, only one word, okay? So, yes. Hi, I'm Kevin. This is Wendy. Uh, our topic is what is information technology. Thank you. First, uh, I will share a video about what is IT. It's very short, about one minute. So, is it a video? Right, you got it. Information technology, IT. It's this, this, and this. IT is wow. It's stuff your parents haven't even thought of yet. IT is moving, it's mixing, sharing, and more. IT is solving a problem, thinking, and processing. IT is making money, saving lives, changing the world. It's a living, it's a life. IT is in your pocket. So, this is a very interesting 
video. And we know now IT refers to anything to computer science, uh, such as network, software, internet. And so we almost use, use, use IT technologies every day. And now we, we, just, we can't live without them. And the second is many companies now have IT department, which, which is a um, which and in computer network and, and other technology area of their business. And IT jobs include computer programming, network and, and administration, computer and engineering, web developing, and technology supporting. And, and so that is what the IT jobs do. So what do, what do IT professionals do? Uh, there, are, there are four areas about it. The first is the administrator. Uh, it is kind of the management of the database network and system. And then the second one is the analyst. And, the, and it may, the, the IT professional may they can write the database and network and, and the engineering, hardware and, and software. And there are also web developers and designers. And then and then Kashi will keep going in the, the presentation. Okay, uh, in this day and age, we use internet every day and we almost cannot live without internet. Um, we, use, uh, we use it during we eating, chatting, or even traveling. So if we, if someday we don't have IT, what will happen and uh, um, what, should, what should we do to make up this phenomenon and uh, nowadays many people were cheated by online cheaters and uh, um, the number of cheated people are still increasing and I won't know why why this phenomenon happened and uh, what should we do to deal with this um, Albert Einstein said, I fear the day that technology will serve us on um, our human interaction. The world will have a generation of idiots. So Einstein, um, Einstein's words, um, um, why he said this sentence and uh, what will happen in the future? In conclusion, IT creates an easier life for people and strengthens the contact of all over the world. Although information technology has a very significant impact on all aspects of our, of our lives, we still cannot rely too much on IT. Uh, we search information from those links. Thank you for listening to this all my presentation. Okay, thank you, Kathy and Wendy, for helping us to understand more about information technologies that you've learned from the past two or three weeks. Thank you. So you can um, take away your USB. May I ask any one of you who want to share today? If you have not signed up for sharing in the next class, make sure you sign this up using the online public discussion forum last week, okay? By coming up to do your sharing here, you're actually formalizing your class participation by wasting your questions after watching individual video, you're also participating in class, and all this will be put this down into your general record, so by the end of the semester, you can put down a list of your activity in class. These are very good things, okay? And you also will notice that um, by this Wednesday, I will set up the submission link for learning contract number one. Okay? If you read my teacher's message in this past week, you know that I have my um, learning contract information links and also 
the um, submission links are going to be ready here. As you can see, if you go to the end, you can see one link is called CISG114, Section 1, Submission Link for Learning Contract 001. You will see all the submission links for the five different items here on this Wednesday, okay? And you are going to submit your work starting on this Saturday, which is March the 8th. I give you, I guess, up to March the 10th. That means you have three days time, March the 8th, March 9th, and March the 10th to submit your work. Okay? So normally it's already two more days into your deadline. Normally it's supposed to be on one day. But you will see the link will be open on 12 a.m. on the 8th, this Saturday, and remain active until the end of next Monday, which is March the 10th. Okay? So, uh, your number of items to be submitted, if you read my teacher's message uh, that I released yesterday, you can see that it's basically, I give you the team, uh, the pairing here, uh, everything is paired already, and then you have the number of items here. Now, let me give you an explanation. Normally, when I consider a pair, it is just two persons, but it happens that in this class, Right, we do have three pair, uh, two pairs of three persons, right? Because Vicky is in one pair, right? Which has two persons, and then is is two another and another person. Yes, Lena is another pair of three persons. Normally, remember, item two said you need to have a pair-based discussion of at least one topic of your choice with your learning partner. So in a, in the three-person pair. I guess one of you in your three person pair has to be considerate enough to engage in the discussions of more than one partner. Because, for example, in your pair, uh, originally the two of you, you discuss with him his topic and he discuss with you your topic, but now here we have Nana. So either one of you need to engage Nana to discuss with her her chosen topic. Okay, so as to make sure Nana has the discussion detail to submit. Okay, because Nana, when you submit item number two, you must submit a discussion detail, discussions with one of these. And for the item number three, if we have two persons in that pair, we just have two topics. Okay, but if you have three persons in that pair, you have to submit three topics because which topic? It's done by individual member, and you have to put, put them together, okay? So the topic is mainly OIA. And then please read the report writing guideline here. Your report must follow something like this, okay? Yeah, and then three essential assessment rubrics are already there. They help you understand how to give yourself a grade. So click on those assessment rubrics to check on the quality of your work. It's not easy to get a very high grade, okay? If you follow the assessment rubric, make sure you provide at least three to five references for the topic of your interest. And each one of you need to be responsible for that before your partner can give you a little more, okay? So if you want your partner to engage you in your discussion, make sure you provide your partner OIA and a reference from three to five. Not only three is good enough. When you have a set of this, you're well set, okay? So, but if you did not provide enough references, and if you want me to discuss with you, if I were your papa, I have the responsibility to remind you you need to do that, okay? If you do not submit your work with references, you will lose points, particularly the journal, okay? And then the discussion detail, uh, when you engage your papa to discuss with him or her, make sure you pinpoint O, pinpoint I, and pinpoint A. When you go through this free, at least you have to engage in uh, the discussions with your papa by doing posting of three times. And when you free time posting interactions, you look at the uh, forum discussions rubric and you are well set to have at least this many points. Okay? And for the report writing, make sure you follow the guidelines based on your set of OIA, all right? Observations, interpretations, and applications. Now, yes, it's easy. It's in the Moodle environment. 
Now, when you get into your Moodle environment, let's go from the very beginning, right here, okay? This is the overall Moodle environment. Now, this is week number four, okay? We go to week number four. There we go. This is the teacher's message here. When you click this link, you've got this. But normally, I will put it in two more places. This is called the latest news. Click on this. Okay? When you click on this link, you got this one. When you click on this link, you will got all the rubrics information. It's already linked up. Click on the link. Okay? Click on the link. So, uh, yeah. each group do different objects? Now, you have to understand that uh, you have to submit the following items for your work in learning contract number one. Click on submission here. And when you click on submission, see, you can see on March the 8th, you're supposed to turn on Artifact for Learning Contract number one. And when you click on this link, you are brought to this page. Okay? This page tells you the five items. Okay? And this five item, you can actually read here. I give you the five items here. Do you see that? The same five items. All right? So if you're here, look at these five items. The first item is individual work. The second item, you must engage your learning partner to finish the discussions of one topic of your interest. What is meant by one topic of your interest? In each week, okay, in each week's reading list, we have a number of questions. We consider one question as one topic, okay? So, number two means you must compete online discussion with your learning partner for one topic. That means your investigation of one question. Now, there may be two questions in week one. There may be three questions in week two. There may be two questions in week three, and another two questions in week four. No matter how many questions in each week, you just have to select one question from that week. And when you select one question for that week as the topic, no matter how many weeks are there, you just have to do one, okay? One. Don't do more than that. I do not want quantity, I just want quality discussions of one topic. And when you do the discussions of that one topic, make sure you have to put into the discussion forum your topics O, I, A that you produce. For example, if you want your learning partner to discuss with you the question, what is information literacy, which is for week number four. You type week number four, what is information literacy, and underneath this question, we have a number of items, right? You just need to select one, okay, to investigate. Remember, on each week's reading list, under each question. Now, if you believe you want to select more than one, it's fine. You're free to do it, but one, sometimes it's more than enough, okay? Because when you select any one item, you are also obliged to give at least three relevant references. And normally, where do you get the three relevant references from the other item? Okay? Or work from your own choice. It's really up to you. So, item number two is also, you need to work with your learning partner. And item number three is, again, once you have finished discussing your topic with your learning partner, and your partner has finished his or her discussion with you. One topic from you, one topic from your learning partner, and the two topics put together, you need to write a report. Okay? All right, so that is the report. If you have three persons in your pair, you have three topics, one from each one of you. Okay? And you just have to extend the use of the guideline to do that. And at the end, you see that one refractive block. That means after you finish writing your report with your set of OIA, you're going to reduce a large number of writing into a small piece of refractive essay on that topic, and that is called a block. Each member needs to write this on your own. Okay? You will discover that I will set up a link for you to collect this one too. One, two, three, four. Okay? And then five is the attendant liberal, it's called proposal. A proposal is done by each one of you in your pair. It's very simple. 
Is a topic you want to do, so you need to give a topic's name, name, only the name, and then three questions of that topic, okay? And then three to five references supporting this topic in APA format. And finally, one paragraph, which is 200 words, okay? Not more than 200 words to explain why you select this topic you want to do. Okay, this is a very interesting thing because you have already going through this class for three weeks and this is the fourth week. But those topics you've gone through from week number one, two, three, four, you might want to do something of your own, investigate. So you can name that something as your proposal topic. Follow it with three questions, very simple questions, don't need to be complicated, okay? Three questions. And then three relevant references, you can make up to five if you have. Okay, and then one paragraph, not more than 200 words, explaining why this topic is important to you. And then you need to provide one meeting minute, at least one, okay? What is that for? It's a record, it's a recording uh, of the discussion between you and your partner for what to do. Now that is different from the discussion, okay? Discussion is based on the topic, but that meeting minute is an arrangement between you and your partner as to when you're going to meet or what you're going to do since the deadline is March the 8th, how you can manage the time together, perhaps when you're going to call me in the evening or when we're going to meet online in the UM model. This is called a meeting minute, housekeeping, all right? So um, in the submission link, I will definitely set up the link for all of these items. But if you read my teacher's message, okay, in my teacher's message, the five item is one, two, three, four, okay? And this seems to be a lot there, but I'm going to make sure you know that it's important, all right? Uh, you have to write it wrong on the UFO of true, but so far, I'm going to give you this, all right? Okay, so make sure you read my teacher's message carefully one more time, and then to check this up with this, okay? Uh, you have to make sure you come back to the website almost twice a day, all right? So this is going to be the very first piece of work you're going to produce, and it's really, you have a lot of choice. Again, you have a lot of choice to do. You don't have a lot to work on. So let me take attendance now, and let you go, because many of you have a test coming up, okay? So allow me to take attendance now. I know all of your presence today. Kenny is here, Sarah, Thank you. Kara. Thank you. Kara is here, right? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. And then Joanna. Thank you. Yosini. We can with Kenny. Lavi. Yes, thank you. And then Sherry. Thank you. Nico. Thank you. Lena. Thank you. Sveki. Thank you. Uh, Helen. Thank you. Joanne. Thank you. Winston. Yes. Rack is not here now. Uh, Kathy and Cersei, thank you very much, and Wendy. So looking forward to seeing you again on Thursday, all right? So if you have any questions, you can stay and ask me questions, I'm free, all right? Let me close the camera first. So that's it for today's CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Life on March the 3rd, 2014. Until this Thursday, stay tuned.